Hey, this is Jonathan Bukhara for Fluency++. In a previous video, we saw the STL algorithms on sets. Today, we're going to dissect one to see what it has in its guts. We're going to take one of them, which is set difference, because all the algorithms on set have a very similar way of implementation. So let's just take one of them, set difference, and get into how it works. Let's take a set A and a set B and implement set difference between A and B. We start with setting a cursor on each collection and the idea is to move down both collections with those cursor while trying to have the value in the cursor of A lower than the one in B. And since the collections are sorted, it allows us to find the, the elements that are in A and not in B. Let's start with this example to illustrate. The value in the cursor of A is one, which is lower than the one in B. Since the collections are sorted, we are sure that one is not in B. So one, we send it to the output. And then we move down the set A while this condition holds that the value in the cursor of A is lower than the one in B. At some point, this may no longer hold. So we may have a value in A, which is not lower than the one in B, which is the case here. In this case, we want B to catch up with A so that A becomes lower than B again. So let's compare B with A. Is the one in B lower than the one in A? Here is the case, because 4 is lower than 6. So we're going to move down the cursor in B so that it catches up the one in A. And then we are in this situation where the one in A is not lower than the one in B, and the one in B is not lower than the one in A either. In this case, we are not concerned with those values because we are looking for the one in A which are not in B. And if the two values are equivalent, we're not concerned with them. So we're going to move down in both collections. Here, 7 is equivalent to 7, so we're going to move down again in both collections. Now we're in a situation where the one in A is lower than the one in B, so we're going to send that to the output and move down in A. Then we find a value which is not lower than B, and the one in B is lower than A, because 8 is lower than 10. So we're going to move down in B to catch up the one in A. But then we're out of the collection B. So it means that all the values left in A are not in B. So we are going to dump them out in the output collection and that's over. Let's see how that looks like in code. So we said that we should start with creating a cursor in both collections. I'm not using the value which is passed to the function because I don't like modifying parameters in the function. That's to know that story. I'm just creating an iterator current for every collection. So the cursor of the collection A is current 1 and the 1 in B is current 2. We want to move down the first collection and check that the value in the cursor of the first collection is lower than the one in the second collection. So let's start by moving down the first collection. Now let's check that the value in the first cursor is lower than the one in the second cursor. If it is, we want to send the value to the output and move down the first collection. Now, if it's not, there are two possibilities. Either the value in the second collection is lower than the one in the first collection, or it's not lower, in which case it's equivalent. You note that we don't write the one in the first collection is greater than the one in the second collection, which is kind of like the same. But we only use lower than so that we have as few constraints on the type as we can. So we use just lower than and we say that the second one is lower than the first one. In that case, we say that the cursor in the second one should catch up the one in the, in the first one. So we're just going to move it down the collection. In the other case, it means that neither one is lower than the other one, which means that they are both equivalent. In this case, we said that we want to move down in parallel in both collections. 
finally, if we reach the end of the second collection, we want to send everything that's left in the first collection out to the result. And we just return the output iterator like most algorithms do. That's about it. We can just simplify a bit the implementation in this if, because there's the plus plus current to, which is in both the if and the else. So we can just take this out. And off we go. That's an implementation for set difference. Let's just try it out. Let's run that code. And there we are. So this is how set difference could be implemented. And you can imagine that set union, set intersection, merge, or those kind of algorithms, you can implement them in a very similar way. In the code that we saw, you can see that you have some constraints on the sets that makes sense now. Like we saw that a set has to be sorted to get into a set algorithm. And it's because there is this way of like, so walking down both of the sets in parallel and this to work, you need it to be sorted. The advantage of that is that this algorithm is in linear complexity. Also, you saw that the comparison between elements was, is this element before this other one? Is it lower than and not equal to? If you want to customize the comparison operator of a set difference, for example, or any set algorithm, then it needs to have the semantic of less of being lower than and not equal to. We saw how this was implemented in the algorithm. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, you can subscribe to the channel and put a thumb up. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.